Intentional communities have existed throughout history. Groups of people sharing a commitment to a common purpose. The New Testament suggests community is the way of the future. Many intentional communities have a spiritual focus, as does Sparrowhawk Village. Four hundred acres of wood and pasture land were here when the idea to build this village unfolded, with a concept to facilitate spiritual learning and personal growth. Its founder, Rev. Carol Parrish Hara, felt her life's work of sharing transformational techniques was well established in Sarasota, Florida, where she lived with her husband Charles in a small community. Their dream seemed to have been realized, but unexpectedly, Carol was guided to leave Sarasota to start a new community in northeastern Oklahoma. The goal was to create a community to serve as a teaching center for the spiritual sciences and that could someday be home to 500 people who shared a commitment to personal growth focused on spiritual ideals. Six families moved caravan style north to Tahlequah a town of 14,000 in the foothills of the Ozark Mountains and capital of the Cherokee Nation. A rented house became temporary class, office, and living space. In 1981, Light of Christ Community Church purchased the land. Charles Hara guided the construction of roads and water lines to make the mountaintop livable. At a groundbreaking ceremony, August 15, 1982, the church and village were dedicated to Mother Mary. By 1983, the church and a few homes stood on the mountaintop. The vision and concept came through Carol's guidance. Financial and architectural guidelines came from Charles. It seemed as if the right thing or the right people or the right information would come along just at the moment that it was needed. and. I really feel that spirit had a, a lot to do with the being able to put the village together, being able to make things come out and work as it did. I, I seem to get guidance as to how to solve problems that I had not been able to, to solve in other ways. Keys to the success of the village came from the backgrounds of the founders. Charles was the business manager for the University of South Florida New College Campus, Sarasota. Carol had a successful business career and Grace Bradley was a retired social worker. It was to these two Carol turned when she felt called to leave the city community in Sarasota to establish a community in Oklahoma. Grace Bradley serves as secretary of the Light of Christ Community Church Board of Trustees. A minister and past advisor for seminary students, Grace loves the village. One of the things that I am very pleased with about our community is that we are uh, a part of also the city and county. The people who are here are our people who register to vote. Uh, they're people who take part in uh, civic fund drives. Our group has been uh, active in the founding of hospice and uh, in very active in the founding of a home for uh, the homeless in town. Intentional communities are social experiments in cooperation. Sparrowhawk Village is a community, not a commune. All homes and lots are privately owned and villagers come and go as they would anywhere else. In a spiritual community, there's an idea that one must have, the community must have, a keynote. And your spiritual work is what sounds your keynote. So the dedication of the group in coming together and doing their medit group meditation, doing their prayers for the planet, doing their invoking of right action for the Sparrowhawk Village, all of this creates a kind of, I call it a, a magnet that draws to this place, or any place that practices such, the grace that is needed to keep meeting the challenges. Sparrowhawk Village chose its name from the mountain upon which it rests. 
native people named the area long ago. An ancient Egyptian symbol, the sparrow hawk or kestrel, is a small falcon that can fly straight up and hover, representing levitation and ascension. The village seeks to create a similar high consciousness. As an interfaith Christian church and member of the International Council of Community Churches, we respect all world religions. The church seeks to guide in the way of the Christ and villagers enjoy access to renowned speakers who come to teach at the seminary. On Sunday morning, communion, meditation, and church services are offered, after which a community covered dish lunch is shared. In the afternoon, spiritual healing is available. The distinctive Aquarian Rosary, written by Carol and published by Sparrowhawk Press, is said on Saturday mornings. Weekday mornings, a guided meditation is available. Once a month, Insight Group explores concepts and ideas in an open and honest environment. Cedar Carrier has been attending meditation every morning for five years. She leads the chanting, her niche in the community. She feels she can measure meditation's cumulative effects by the refinement of her art. I just have something pushing me very strongly from behind saying, this is uh, the thing I want to do more than anything is to meditate and uh, explore my mind and consciousness. Careful planning was implemented before the church was built to access the earth's natural, powerful energies. Throughout history, Places of worship have been built on ley lines, live streams of energy within the earth, located by a technique called dowsing. The church altar is directly over an energy center where five ley lines intersect. The choir takes an active role in praising the Creator during Sunday morning, full moon, solstice, and equinox services. Ordained by light of Christ, Jesse Garnet serves as minister of music. A community world healing meditation occurs one evening weekly. A healing room is an expression both of a belief in spiritual healing and of service. Healers perform polarity, healing spirals, Reiki, and laying on of hands. Gail Enright is a Reiki master, minister, advisor for the seminary, and director of the healing room. The idea of Sparrowhawk Village possibly becoming a healing center appeals to her. Most residents of the village see the earth as a living being, believing respect is due all kingdoms, plant, animal, and mineral. Land conservation is a priority. The community has set aside one-third of its land to remain in its natural state, including a mile-long stretch of riverfront property. One-third is dedicated to agriculture, and one-third is for development. A campground teems with activity during the summer months. The village adjoins 700 acres of state primitive area, complete with hiking trails. The village plans 168 lots half on top of the mountain for cluster-style homes, and half at the base of the mountain with larger lots and closer to the river. Lots range from ten to thirteen thousand dollars. Over seventy lots have been sold, and over forty homes have been built. Charles has built many of them, pioneering the use of large foam core roof panels which are extremely energy efficient. 